Is Google Assistant gonna take over our boring tasks? Let's talk about that. So welcome back to the Step Next Training Channel. I'm Kevin Kunkel, and today we're talking about the Google Duplex, which is a new AI that is changing the game. So let's talk about some of the detail. But first, let's talk about two terminologies that were developed early on before this Google Duplex was even created or even thought about, okay? Let's go back to the 1950s where Alan Turing developed a, basically, a test. The test is whether or not a machine can operate well enough like a human that other humans cannot detect it. From 1950, the original Blade Runner movie that came out in the 80s was based on a book called Do Androids Dream of Electronic Sheep? This was written by Philip Dick back in 1968. So in the 50s, we were thinking about machines being more human than human. In the book, um, Do Androids Dream of Electronic Sheep, we're talking about testing robots to see if they're human. And in the movie Blade Runner, we actually test robots to see if they even are robots or human and whether or not they believe they're human or robots. There was two levels of testing. And what we were finding is in a movie built in the 80s, there's a possibility that a machine becomes more human than human and starts acting like a human in every regard to a point where you cannot physically see that robot and say that's a robot, right? So Google has now come out with a AI, a software that is breaking the uncanny valley. It is achieving the Alan Turing test. And these tests were all set up in the theory that we would get to a point where a machine would operate in a way that was more human than human. And that's where we're at now. So if you watch this clip, and I'm gonna play the video right now, you're going to see a human reacting to a robot in a way that it doesn't know that it's a robot. That human does not know that it's talking to a robot. So let's play the clip right now. See how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For 7 people? Um, it's for 4 people. 4 people when? Um, Day, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually we leave here for like, after like 5 people. For 4 people you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the 7th. Oh, no, it's not too busy. You, you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I gotcha. Thanks. Bye-bye. So it's putting ums, it's putting mks, it's putting all these little word nuances that we use as humans to interact with each other and, and our nervousness catch in and we put filler words in and all these different human tendencies are being implemented into this program to allow it to act more like a human and allow the the human on the other side of the phone to not recognize that it's a robot now we've all received you know spam calls of from sally saying hey you want a trip on a cruise and you know pretty quickly that it's a robot. Uh, maybe they have some built-in uh, little breaks here and there to try to fool you. And I've been on a couple calls where it's, it's close, okay? It's close, but I'm intelligent enough to know how to ask a question to break the program. This is operating in a way that it's not being broken very quickly or easily. And what that means is it's operating like a human. 
It's going to ask questions back to the human to allow it to act more human. So what is this? So what does this all mean? Where's this all going? But what's it, where this is all going is you're not going to need to call for a hair appointment anymore. You just put it on your calendar and the Google will figure out that it needs to be that you need to have a confirmation that of the appointment. It will call up that hairdresser. It will set up the appointment. It will put a confirmation on your Google calendar and you'll be all set. So you don't have to interact with your hairdresser anymore. You don't have to interact with calling of restaurants. It's going to lead into more spamming. It's going to lead into more inter less interaction on the phone than you need because you can they can make those calls. Now, so what's interesting is instead of the robot talking to the human, right? You will eventually have the restaurant create a robot that will talk to the robots. And so the robot talking to robot and then the whole thing becomes a lot more efficient, right? So then there's no need to have interaction. You just have a robot talk to another robot and then everything will be resolved for you and you'll get that restaurant uh, reservation on your Google Calendar. Fantastic. No interaction, no, no need to worry about it, no need to do it, it just happens. It's pretty awesome. So this is just an audio version of the Google Assistant. Is there gonna be another Google Assistant that actually writes out your emails? That would be fantastic, I'd love that. And then I wouldn't have to spend a lot less time on, on creating emails and responding back to people. Maybe I just need a, um, maybe it watches the way I write my emails and then it starts replying to other emails the way I write my emails. So it has my flavor, but it auto replies to other emails and also filters out all the email, you know, using a, an email bot filters out all the spam that I don't want as well, right? So maybe it gets smart and it actually starts allowing us to communicate through email as well. The possibilities are endless. Where this technology is gonna go and how it's gonna adapt we are just on the infancy of this AI and controlling the AI and allowing it to get more human-like. Um, if this iteration by Google is in coming out, let's just call it 2019. If it comes out in 2019 and we have this, what are we gonna get five years from now? What are we gonna get in 2020? What are we gonna get in 2021? Let alone 2024, five years from now. The algorithms and the AI itself will teach itself to be more human and more human and more human and more human to a point where it's not going to be recognizable. We're going to get to a place where we're going to have to test robots that have this AI built into it to identify whether or not that's a robot or not. Now, right now, our robots are very close. You can see the ones that have a full face and they move their mouth and it's very uncanny. It knows how to speak and have small talk with you, and then it carries on a conversation. And it gets to a point where we are in Blade Runner, where the robot is interacting, and you're having a hard time recognizing that it's not human, right? Right now, this is already happening in the software side with this, with with the audio. So it's not too long before we're going to adapt that brain into a robot, and then have to have that conversation about: Is this okay? Is a robot calling you and being representative of a human, but it's actually a robot? Is that okay? These are good conversations. I didn't think we were going to have this conversation this year. I thought this was going to be a couple years out. I thought maybe by 2020, maybe by 2025, we would have an AI that would be unrecognizable as a, as a robot. If you put it in just the box of the phone, it looks like it's already there. It, it's already representing a human as good enough that the human on the other line doesn't know. This is changing. This will change our world. Hopefully it's for the better. I know I'm excited for it, and especially when it comes to making phone calls or making emails. I'm more than glad to have this as a resource that allows me to build 
what I want to do, making videos and building robots and everything else. I'd much rather have my resources and my time allocated to the things I love than the minuscule tasks that I have to do every day. So if you agree with this, leave a comment down below. Or if you disagree, I'd love to have a conversation about this as well. So I'd love to hear your comments as well. And if you want to hear more about AI and where this is all going, contact us at stepnexttraining at gmail.com or visit our website at stepnexttraining.com. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next time. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up down below and leave a comment if you really want to have a conversation around this. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll leave you with this. Make, share, and repeat. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.